I love that music. Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Smith, and we enter week three of Friday Night Huddle. Let's get right to it. Here on the south side, our game of the week, Maury, in search of trying to end the drought that is beating Highland Springs. Connor Real takes it from here. That I do, B. Smith, and I know that you don't just love a bit of music. I know you love a little bit of petty. A little bit of Petty Crocker gets B. Smith going. We can't confirm that this was pettiness, but at this game, well into when introductions should have already began, neither team had emerged from the locker room to the point where the official said, I'm going to penalize them if they don't come out soon. Were they seeing who would blink first? We don't know for sure, but it certainly felt like gamesmanship. However, it wasn't all pettiness tonight. There was a little bit of love involved here, too. Atari Newkirk going for the touchdown, and he receives a gentle embrace from Darius Bowman. And then they kind of hang out. They have a moment on the ground together. Bowman gets up and gets credit for half the touchdown. So we got a little bit of love going, and it was all Mari feeling the love early on. Newkirk, again, this quarterback is stepping Stepping up in his new role, he finds Javon Wiggins down the field to make it 7-0 Commodores, and it looked like they might roll over defending state champions Highland Springs earlier. Here's Newkirk with the touchdown run. That would make it 14-0. However, Highland Springs would finally break through, as so many teams too do, with the big play. Joshua Avery scores here. Not only that, it was 20-7 going into the half. After the half, a long touchdown drive for the Springers that made it 2014. Mari's offense stalls all the momentum as Highland Springs way when they fumble the punt. It is recovered by the Commodores. They would kick a field goal immediately after. That was your final, 23-14. to They break the curse. Coach McCain after the game. They're a nationally ranked team. I mean, we feel like we're the same. I, I feel like we got enough guys to be a nationally ranked team. I feel like our guys work hard to be a nationally ranked team. So, I think the atmosphere, the talent, the coaching, the two programs, um, the crowd, the hype of the game, I think it was good for Virginia. I think it was good for my kids in those orange jerseys. A massive statement for the Mari Commodores, and now always making massive statements. I throw it over to Julia Haskins. Well, guys, I don't think I'm alone when I say that sharing these highlights with you all each week makes us almost take for granted how lucky we are to be out there enjoying a sport we all love. In Oscar Smith's case, a former player is no longer with us to do that. The Tigers game tonight began with a moment of silence honoring Taj Boyd, a former player for Oscar Smith who passed away last month while in his first season at Liberty. Boyd's memory was top of mind for the Tigers who hosted Great Bridge. Late in the first quarter, first and goal from the 10 is when Brandon Nesbitt sneaks by for an early 7-0 advantage. When it was the Wildcats' turn, well, the Tigers swarmed them. Jordan McDowell, among others, with the sack there. And in the second quarter, Oscar Smith was up 14-6, to and they'd sneak one more in just before the half. This was Isaac Hoffman breaking tackles left and right, finding his way in the end zone. The Tigers rolled to win that one 48-6. to in the private schools, Norfolk Academy hosting Catholic. Bulldogs up 21 to 6 at the half and into the third. There was no slowing them down. First and 10 from the 23. Cooper Tishko with a dart to John Grunwald, walking it in for another score. On Catholic's next drive, they tried to counter, but the Bulldogs applying pressure. It's fumbled and recovered by Norfolk Academy. Led to another Bulldogs touchdown. This time, Tishko to William Foley. The Bulldogs down Catholic 42 to 6. Well, the biggest takeaway for me from that game, Norfolk Academy with a fire playlist B Smith. You said you like music. What were you dealing with over at Booker T? Anything good? I know you like the Black Eyed Peas. We heard about that a little bit earlier, but yeah, it was it was kind of music made between as we head back to the city. Uh, Booker T hosting Churchland, and this one a bit of a defensive struggle at times in the first half. First quarter, the truckers Daniel Mitchell trying to find Avion Jordan. Eh, not much, just five yards, no points out of it. Booker's try to counter as well. Jay Sean Redden to Jonathan Ennis. First down, they were in business, but once again, no points. Booker T driving. Kamari and Williams, probably one of the best runs of the first half. Tough, but the truckers wind up prevailing in this one. Your final 
28 to 6. Other action around the area. Tall Tallwater winner, as was Cox. First Colonial over Princess Anne. Green Run blanks Kellum. Uh, Kempsville over Ocean Lakes. Western Branch Kings Fork postponed. And Norfolk Christian, they fall hard to Atlantic Shores, 53 to 13. Let's go across town. Norview in a 14-0 hole against Norcom Greyhounds. Getting a little more in the third quarter. The fumble. Jordan Cross pounces on it for Norcom. Matthew Alton will take care of business in the next play. He'll go left side for a 21-0 lead. They will cruise to a 40 to 13 advantage. Beavis sticking on Woodside. That's Trenton Mitchell going right side for the early 7-0 lead. Then the Phantoms weren't done. Second quarter, Adonis Stowers. Almost like an Adonis-like throw here to Anthony Reddick. See ya! 90-yard connection. He's off to the races, and that made it 14 to nothing. And Stowers wasn't done. Nice little pass to Keontae Gray. Somehow goes through this gauntlet of Wolverine defenders. All Phantoms, they wound up rolling by a final of 34 to nothing.